Hello and welcome to another session on thoughts on international business, marketing and strategy. My name is Professor Michael Tsenkota. I'm with Georgetown University's McDonough School of Business. And with me is my colleague, Professor Charles Scuba, also with the McDonough School at Georgetown University. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Today we are concentrating on the rapid decline of the European currency, the Euro. You may have heard that uh, there is concern, there are worries, and there are dreadful predict predictions as to what's this Euro decline all about. Uh, within the last few months, the Euro has this is the key currency for all the European nations which subscribe to this particular uh, currency. Within a few months, it has declined by more than 20%. And it used to be over a dollar fifty, which one had to pay to acquire one euro. Now the euro is down to one twenty-two, and that, of course, worries people because the question is: number one, why is that? Number two, where is the money going? So let me turn to my colleague, Professor Scuba. Why is that? <laughs> well, uh, uh, I think there, there's a lot of emotional underpinnings to this, but it has certainly been a dramatic le uh, week, Michael. Uh, with uh, the German government having to uh, intervene in the uh, in the what they call the nor naked short selling market, the uh, uh, the rising LIBOR rate for our students, the London Internet inter interbank offering rate, plus the uh, overnight swap uh, spread, uh, the spread between LIBOR and overnight swaps. So everything's being going up this week. The net result is the dollar is. Uh, is appreciating and the euro is depreciating. Good news for our students who were spending the summer in uh, in uh, Europe this uh, this summer, Michael. But uh, in general, it causes other uh, concerns. But I said it was it was causing it, there was an emotional underpinning to this. Um, I've long felt that the euro was frankly overrated. There has been a tendency by many to equate the euro with the German mark or the French franc or the strength of the northern European currency, previous currencies. But in fact, uh, the euro uh, zone consists of many uh, countries. And uh, you know, this uh, current uh, depreciation really reflects the reality that the Greek drachma and the uh, Spanish peseta are also part of the euro zone. So we're seeing it, uh, an emotional reaction, but a rational one, too. Emotions, absolutely trust, is obviously something that comes to mind when we think about international business. What makes people trust in funny little paper, which is what any printed currency really is? And, and apparently this trust seems to have been shaken. I, I do want to go back. You interestingly ma mentioned that uh, you, you called it the naked short selling. That, that sounds titillating. I, I, I think it, it has to do a lot with banks nowadays which are being protected by these new regulations. Um, you know, I think, uh, at, at least when I heard it first, uh, the first thought that came to my mind is, will human foolishness never end? Because it seems to me like as if one were to make a decision, when the phone rings, I shall not pick it up. This way I won't get any bad news without recognizing that the news itself doesn't change just because you don't pick up the phone. And short selling, of course, is indicative of market expectations and sends you a signal. And if you prohibit it, all that means is you are less informed. But quite apart from that, yes, you're absolutely right. You have different European currencies which are underlying the euro. Uh, and what happens, of course, in terms of sovereign rights, governments can make their own decisions what to spend and how to spend it. Uh, but as we see, if there is no carryover to currency discussions and values, then there's a big problem. In decades past, Greece could have devalued its currency and attracted more tourists. Now they can't. And what we see now here today is we have politicians encountering very dreadful conditions. First of all, a changing environment constrains their actions. They have loads of debt already, and they don't know what to do about increasing debt, which they can't contain. 
and they're exerting leadership without any kind of followership. If you listen around Chancellor Merkel of Germany, who has proposed as keystone the support of Greece and other nations like Portugal, Spain, Italy, maybe even France, um, there are very few followers lining up saying we're all in favor of that. On the contrary, Germans are saying, why the heck are we paying for all of Europe? Yes, in fact, the, uh, the German taxpayer, and they, by the way, pay quite a bit of taxes in Germany, has to now uh, support the Greek government, which is heavily weighted towards the public sector, very public sector dependent, uh, not a very thriving private sector in Greece. And the Greek uh, citizens have shown a, uh, shall we say, a reluctance to pay their taxes. Uh, I noticed that the Greek... Uh, tourism minister had to resign. Uh, her husband is uh, apparently behind in his taxes of purportedly 5.5 billion or 5.5 million euros. So now the Germans have to pay, have to support these kind of weaknesses. Um, I think we've seen a, a reluctance on the part of many Germans to do this. At the same time, probably they know they have to do it. The Eurozone uh, will probably endure throughout this problem. Uh, it's probably uh, a, a strong testament to the political will of the European Union that they were able to fund this aid package to begin with. Challenging times, difficult, uh, difficult uh, times ahead for the European taxpayers. But not just for the Europeans, also for the United States. This is interesting because less confidence in the Euro to some degree at least, means more confidence in the dollar. It means higher currency value on the U.S. part, which perhaps affects fewer U.S. exports, more U.S. imports. And you know, even right now, with the IMF subscribing to $250 billion of this rescue package, a good portion of that is U.S. taxpayers support U.S. taxpayer money. Uh, when the euro was introduced, we need to remember that, uh, it was introduced at 80 cents to the euro. So even now it's still 50% higher than it was at its introduction. Uh, and, and so we don't, our hearts don't need to feel too worried about the Europeans. They're still doing reasonably okay. But the most important thing is we need to observe, we need to learn, we see what the trust issue is. And who knows, maybe down the road there will also be some pressure on the US dollar. But so much for that. Thank you for watching.